And we're live. Hello, everyone. Welcome to January's Eye Opener. I'm Ashley Mendoza, Director of Live Events for Homeopathy World Community. I'm here with Brenda Generali, a certified comprehensive iridologist instructor who is also my teacher. It's a pleasure to have you here, Brenda. How are you? Good morning. I'm good. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, so, Brenda, tell us a little bit about yourself. What inspired you to become involved in iridology and how has your journey been so far? How did I get inspired? I got inspired because I had a friend that was seeing an iridologist with some health issues and she was getting really good results. She was following what you know he was telling her to do and she was getting good results and she suggested that I go see an iridologist. And I, uh, cause I was having some health problems at the time and uh, I did, and I had really great results and I sent friends to him. And then I said, well, how can I learn more? And um, I was uh, directed down to Dr. Jensen down in Escondido and signed up for his beginning class and fell in love with iridology right then. Wow. And how long has it been? <laughs> I was certified in 1987. Wow. Um, and there are a few things you wanted to share with us, right? There are. Yes, I have a, a presentation to share with you. Okay. If we could please go ahead and, and share that. All right. Okay, so um, I was asked by Ashley to give this talk discovering iridology, a window to your health. <clears throat> Here's my information. Uh, my name is Brenda Generali. I'm a naturopath. And I am a certified comprehensive iridology instructor with the International Iridology Practitioners Association. And I teach levels one, two, and three. And I'm also an iridologist, certified iridologist. Uh, and I own Joyful Living Services. I'm the president and CEO. And uh, if you have questions, more questions this presentation, there's my Joyful Living. My email is iridology at netzero.net. And you can contact me by phone, either by uh, an office or on the cell. So first thing I want to do is show you this beautiful picture. One of my students sent this to me, uh, of this hummingbird. And uh, I mean, it's gorgeous with this iris. And so I want to first thing I want to do is say thank you to Ashley very much for inviting me to give this presentation. I'm always open to talking about iridology. I can talk about it all day, <laughs> you know, it's my passion. And so, um, and thank you to the homeopathy world community for inviting me to speak. I, I really appreciate it. It's great to have you here. Uh, so first thing I need to do as always is go over my disclaimer. So Joyful Living Services cannot be held liable for any misuse or malpractice of any techniques taught within this webinar, nor for any injury, suffering, or distress caused by students undertaking the techniques discussed. All students must accept that they are wholly responsible for their actions relating to the practice of iridology and must adhere to the relevant laws in their country and state of residence. Students are responsible for ensuring that they have appropriate liability insurance for practicing in their country and state of residence. Joyful Living Services cannot be held responsible for any advice given by students to members of the public. Students must adhere to their local laws regarding the requirement for registration and or qualification as an iridologist before suggesting supplements or offering nutritional advice. This is all about me. Uh, and so, you know, I, I started in 1983 with my health issues. I had a lot of digestive health issues. I had a lot of problems with my bowels problems with pain in my back, uh, uh, breaking out on my skin, lots of, lots of health problems. And it actually started when I was age 12, which is when I originally, uh, I remember the first time that I had problems with my bowels and it just kind of continued and expanded. And um, in, eight, in 1989, I, you know, I was led to Bernard Jensen and uh, down in Escondido, stayed down on his Hidden Valley Ranch. And if, for those of you, any of you have heard of Bernard Jensen, he was the father of iridology here in the United States. And I became certified. Actually, I became certified in 87 and then uh, certified again in 89. So I have two certification, early certifications. And after that, I created Joyful Living Services. My mission is to help improve 
others' health. In uh, 2018, I became a member of IPA. And in 2021, I was awarded the IPA Instructor of the Year. So that was amazing. I'm also a certified genomic iridologist and work with MTHFR. And I became a, a naturopath last year. Um, I'm in the process of writing an iridology book, and I'm going to be having an introduction, introductory book coming out soon, as well as becoming a fellow, and I'm on the board uh, for the California Naturopathic Association. So I'm doing a lot of things. This is me all the way back in, in uh, 1990, and I was volunteering for Dr. Jensen at one of his symposiums and taking pictures of everybody's eyes, and that's a, that's a fun picture and lots of memories there. And I always like to include this in my presentations that one of my students send this to me. And this just fits perfect with my personality and how I teach. So you can see there, good morning. Good morning, pupils. And all the, all the pupils say, good morning, Miss Iris. I love that. That is just perfect for me, my personality. So uh, I'm gonna introduce iridology to you. Uh, if for those of you that have heard of iridology, it's been around for many, 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 many years and it is a science. And it has changed and it is changing, it is evolving. As we continue to learn more and more and more about iridology, we are learning uh, uh, more and more about the body and more and more about changes with the irises. And so originally we believe that there were only two colors of eyes, blue and brown. And that is one way that iridology has really changed is that we've learned that there are three colors of eyes. There's blue, there's mixed, and there's brown. And each color has its own set of genetic tendencies. We used to use iridology to quote unquote diagnose and we can't do that, we're not doctors. And so what we're really looking for is those genetic tendencies, areas of the body that may not be absorbing nutrients or releasing toxins as well as it should. And then based on that, based on what a person is going through, how to help them. And so, you know, it, uh, it really depends on the eye color and uh, the structure of the eye and the color of the eye. So this is a blue lymphatic eye. And I know Ashley will recognize all these pictures because she's been in my class. Yes. And uh, <laughs> this is actually I've my seen son's this eye. this one a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I use this a lot, yeah. And uh, so this is a blue eye. And, uh, you know, these can be blue, They, you know, from far away, they can look green. Uh, there can be spots in them. His eyes don't have any pigments in them. Uh, but uh, usually blue-eyed people tend to have uh, genetic, uh, you know, everybody has genetic tendencies, but those for blue-eyed people tend to be respiratory and lymphatic. So anything with, you know, uh, the lungs and the bronchioles, the tonsils, the sinus, anything having to do with the joints and arthritis and things like that. And it doesn't necessarily mean that blue-eyed people will have problems with those uh, types of tendencies, but they can. Uh, it's very common. And uh, then we have mixed eye people. This is actually my eye. From far away, you would tell me that I have hazel eyes, but when we bring it in close, you can see there's a lot of orange color in there. And so usually people with mixed eye color like this, people that you think are hazel eyes, they usually will have, they, they usually, their tendencies will usually be digestive. Everything having to do with the digestion and the elimination. So the stomach, the liver, the colon, the pancreas, uh, the intestines, the gallbladder, everything having to do with liver, gallbladder, colon, stomach, pancreas. And usually when we talk to people that have mixed, mixed biliary eyes, and biliary stands for bile, when usually when we talk to people with this color eye, they'll usually say, yes, my problems are usually in my gut. They're in my bowels. They're in, you know, they're usually suffering from maybe uh, um, imbalance with their blood sugar or problems in their gut or problems with the stomach and so on. And then we have brown hemoge hematogenic iris constitutions. Uh, these are people who have true brown eyes. And these people, their genetic tendencies usually have to do with iron, usually has to do with iron, blood, bone, and uh, th there can be glands in there as well. So based on these, the color of the eyes, then we can then determine what types of diet these people, you know, may benefit from, types of exercise or lifestyle, you know, uh, many different things. And then we also look at the structure of the eye. We look to see at the fibers and how close the fibers are. And that gives us a lot, even more information uh, about the eyes. 
So what is iridology? Iridology is a study of the color and the structure of the iris of the eye as it relates to the genetic predispositions and health of the body systems. So we look at the color, like I just showed you, blue mixed in brown, and then we look at the structure, you know, which is all any of the different kind of markings that can show up in the eyes. And based on that, then we can tell a lot about those genetic predispositions. And we can also tell, you know, if it's coming from mom's side of the family or dad's side of the family. And uh, that really helps people a lot to figure out what may be causing various health issues. Okay, very important. And so how do we use iridology? Well, by looking at the iris, we can see these genetic tendencies. Be lear by learning about the genetic tendencies, we can uh, talk about, you know, what somebody should eat, drink, exercise, supplements, lifestyle, you know, maybe even if they need to move, if they need to change their job, you know, there's so many factors. And iridology does never names diseases, but it shows us what areas need nurturing or what body systems need strengthening. So these are some things that iridology can show. It can show inherent strengths and deficiencies of organs, glands, and tissues, potential abilities in the organ to react to illness, familiar patterns of various syndromes and pathologies, and certain foods that a person could have difficulty digesting or utilizing. It can also show us areas of the spine that may have subluxation. We can see that actually by studying the pupil, a potential central and autonomic nervous system imbalances, circulatory disturbances, connective tissue weaknesses, glandular deficiencies, uh, uric acid levels, serum cholesterol levels, and lymphatic congestion. And that does, and, the, and notice the word potentials in front of all of these. And that means that we cannot diagnose from the eye, but we can see the potential for it. And so from there, then of course we need to talk to the client and we need to maybe run some further tests to find out if somebody has certain issues. And a lot of times the clients that come to us are already on programs or have seen a doctor and have been told that they have a problem and you know they they just want to confirm or they need to you know, they want to know well what can we do now that you know that we've got this problem it cannot diagnose or give the name of any disease a person may have or have had or identify any type of pathology it can't determine if a person's had surgery we can't see that or precise blood pressure levels uh, or if a par person has parasites or indicate, indicate the presence of yeast infections. However, Ashley can uh, tell you that we can see some of these things or the potential for some of these things in the sclera. And we do look at the sclera, which is the white, white part of the eye. So we do look at that as well. It cannot uh, confirm the presence of viruses, germ life, or bacterial invasions, determine if a woman is pregnant, or had an abortion. Although I did have a client the other day tell me that she had iridology years ago and somebody told her and her friend uh, the sex of the babies that they were carrying. They thought they were carrying the opposite sex and when the babies were born, the iridologist was right. So that that was really great. And they they were able to tell them that. Now we, we usually don't do that now, but... Um, indicate whether a tumor is present or what size it could be, whether or not a person has kidney stones or gallstones. So these are things that we cannot do with iridology. And uh, we can't tell somebody their exact cholesterol levels or uric acid levels, if they have hemorrhage, if their arteries are blocked or hardened, or tell them what the gender or age of a person is, predict the person's lifespan or impending time of death. There, there are many other tests that can be done to determine all of these things. We just cannot diagnose from the eye. Um, we can't tell somebody if they need surgery. You know, that's for a doctor to do. We cannot tell somebody if they have a specific tooth that can be having a problem or if somebody has ingested poison or, by, or been bitten by a poisonous spider or snake. So we are very careful with our wording and uh, we don't diagnose. We analyze or assess predispositions and genetic inheritances. And we're very careful, you know, when we look at the eyes, you know, it's one thing when you're talking to your friend and you're standing in front of them and you're talking to them, you know, we've been taught to look at each other's eyes when we're talking, but iridology, you know, we're, we're looking at the eyes for a different reason. We're actually looking at the eyes 
to look at the eye color and the structure and to determine genetic tendencies and where areas may not be absorbing nutrients or releasing toxins. And so it's kind of an invasion of, of privacy. So when we talk to somebody, you know, we have to be very careful and we look at the eyes with reverence, honor, and respect. Okay. And when we look at the iris, we're, we're actually looking at the person. We're looking in the person. We can learn a lot about the person's emotions, uh, why they behave the way they do, what makes them tick, not only the physical, but also the emotional. And so it's, it's a very, it's a very, um, it's very invasive for us to stand in front of somebody and be talking to them. And then at the same time, analyzing them, we really need to get permission to do that. So those of us with IPA, we're very dedicated uh, and uh, we're very concerned with the interests of all that come into contact with iridology. So let me give you a little bit about the history of iridology here. Most people that have heard of iridology, a lot of people have heard of Bernard Jensen. You know, most people know they associate iridology with Dr. Bernard Jensen, and they think that iridology started with him, but it didn't. It goes all the way back. It goes way, way back. Australia, China, Egypt, Greece, India, Italy. It's practiced in Europe, here in the United States. And it actually started all the way back with King Tut. So in 1922, uh, Howard Carter, who was an archaeologist, he discovered silver plates while exploring King Tut's tomb. It's thought that the silver plates are some of the first lessons of iridology dating, dating back thousands of years in Egypt. And that's really amazing that it, it you know, they're, that they're, this is discovered. So I've got a few other people that I've listed in here. A lot of times, most people that have uh, learned about iridology have also learned about uh, Ignaz von Pesli. And he was in Buda, Budapest, Hungary. This was 1826 to 1907. He is known as the father of Western iridology. And there was a story that, that is still going around today that this owl, he had an owl, got stuck in his tree. Uh, when he freed the owl, the owl broke. The owl While he missed his leg. And at that time, a line formed in the bottom part of the owl's eye. And this area in iridology it, it is, is known as the leg and the, the hips and the thighs and the lower part of the body. So it makes sense. Unfortunately, no one has been able to replicate this in a wild bird. So we don't know if it really happened, but that is the story. Uh, the key here is that he actually published a book called Discoveries in the Field of Natural Science and Medicine and a guide to the study and diagnosis from the eye. And notice the word diagnosis. We don't use that word anymore. But that is, you know, that's a long time ago. And uh, also, Von Pesley built up the first known chart of the iris. I'm going to show you that chart in a minute. Here's Dr. Jensen. And, you know, he, he really was a wonderful person. And what was so great is that when you're in his class, he used to say everything was so wonderful. You are wonderful. Everything is wonderful. And so well, by the time you leave his class, you're saying, oh, my God, everything is wonderful. And so when I when I think about him, I just think about that, that he really was a wonderful person, he was a really great instructor. And uh, he pioneered the science of iridology in the United States, and he developed one of the most comprehensive iridology charts. He wrote the book, The Science and Practice of Iridology, uh, which is very, very popular. I'm going to show you his chart as well. This is the chart by the Hungarian physician Ignaz von Pesley. And even all the way back in those days, we can see here where there's lung and there's knee and there's back here, back in, back. And uh, so, you know, I can't read most of the words, but I know what the areas are. And so even all the way back in those years, we can, uh, we can see how the chart is beginning, basically by looking at people and learning their symptoms and then correlating that with the eyes and seeing what's showing up in the eyes. Now, this is IPA here. This is an instructor meeting that I went to at that time. And IPA is all about making sure that everybody that is in iridology is on the same page. It was founded for increasing and communicating, communicating knowledge about iridology. 
and to make and to see that iridology is used everywhere in the world and available to every man, woman, and child. And with the internet and with Zoom, you know, we can reach everyone that has access to Zoom and the internet. So here is Dr. Jensen's iridology chart, and it was actually blue and white. And then his daughter-in-law, Ellen Jensen, she went back through and she revised it and color-coded it. And iridology works just like the body. So let me explain it to you real quickly here. So this is the right eye here, and then this is the left eye. And it works just like the body. So if you think about the body, in the center of the body is the digestive system. Uh, right here, here's the pupil, right next to the pupil, this is the stomach. So this is the right side of the stomach and the left side of the stomach. And around that is the, the colon, the small intestines. So here you have the left side of the small intestines and the right side of the small intestines, which then connects to the cecum, goes up to the ascending colon, to the transverse colon, your belly button's here in the center, across, down the descending colon, across the sigmoid, out to the rectum. Okay, around the outside of your body is your skin. And this dark blue ring right here, this is the skin. Right inside here, this is the lymph and circulation. Top of the body is the head. And up here, this is where the brain is and the sinuses are. Okay, here's the, the face and the neck. These are all the different areas. Same thing, this is the right side and the left side. Down at the bottom of the, of the iris, is the lower, all the lower organs. You have the adrenals and the kidneys and the groin and the leg and the knee and the feet and the thighs and the, all the lower organs and glands. This is the, the um, lower abdomen and the pelvic. Here's the, the back here, the spine, the lower back, the upper back. Out here, we have the lungs and the breast. There's the lungs, the thorax. Out here, the lungs and the thorax and so on. So everything is in the iris, everything we see. So here's the heart. Anything that's in the center of the iris and center of the body is going to show up on both sides, both eyes. Uh, so we have thyroid here. And so basically, by looking at the eyes, when we see not only the color, we look at the color, but we look at the structure and we look at any kinds of markings that show up in the eyes. So based on where those markings show up, whether it be a line or a spot or a pigment or something that might look like a, a hole, anything that shows up, depending where it is in the chart, that can tell us where there may be these predispositions, where there may be areas that might not be absorbing nutrients or releasing toxins as well as it should, where maybe the circulation could be improved, uh, you know, the lymph could be improved and so on and so on. And so this is the chart that we're using now. Now, I included this in the presentation because people love their animals and more and more people are becoming involved in animal iridology. So there is canine and feline iridology as well. And uh, I'll tell you from experience that dogs are usually very patient. They'll let you look at their eyes with a flashlight magnifying glass. They'll sit so you can take a picture of their eyes. They're really great about that. Cats, not so much. You know, cats, they, they really don't like you touching them and looking at their eyes. And so they're not going to be as patient. But this is a grid that we use for uh, cats and dogs. And it's very similar where you have the intestines here and the stomach here and the parts of the body are very similar here to humans. And then I also included an equine chart because you can also do iridology with horses. And there's a lot of people that work with equine and do equine massage and uh, work with horses holistically. You can also do iridology for horses as well. And uh, so, of course, they're very different than we are. The chart is very different than we are. Of course, the intestines, the stomach and the intestines are in the center. And even some of the areas for the horse are the same. This is the spine here, and it's the same as it is for humans. So, you know, if you're interested in, if you love horses, you're interested in horses, you love dogs and cats, you know, uh, and uh, you're interested in iridology, there's always animal iridology as well as human iridology. I'm going to show you a few uh, markings here that we can see in the eyes and just kind of explain it to you real quickly. So this is called a circulatory ring. 
And this is the blue ring that's around the outside of the iris. And sometimes it can look purple. Sometimes it can look uh, light blue. Sometimes it can be a dark blue that you can see that it goes around here. And when we see this ring, this has to, it's called a circulatory ring. Uh, it has to do with circulation, okay? A lot of times people can have cold hands and cold feet. It also has to do with iron. Uh, people may be anemic, okay? It also has to do with numbing. So if somebody has uh, problems with the feelings in the extremities, in the hands, in the feet, there, there can be uh, problems with that when somebody has these circulatory rings. So that's a real easy, that's a really easy iris sign to identify. Usually you can just go ahead and look in the mirror and you can see if there's a circulatory ring. It's gonna be a little more challenging to see it if somebody has blue eyes than if they have mixed or brown, but you can still see it. It's actually on the sclera itself. So it's usually not actually on the iris. It's usually on the white part of the eye. So it's, it's usually easier to see. Here's a sign, this is my eye. And uh, these are called contraction furrows. And Ashley and I, before the class, we were just talking about that. And I know she has some of these in her eyes as well. <laughs> a lot. <laughs> well, I wasn't gonna say a lot, but. <laughs> so um, <laughs> when we see these rings, this has to do with anxiety and it has to do with tension and stress, and it has to do with how we deal with anxiety and tension and stress in our life. But it also has to do with, um, it has to do with getting a lot of things done in a very short amount of time. We usually have a lot of irons in the fire. We're usually, you know, we're usually very good at, uh, at uh, running a business or, you know, or uh, directing, you know, and taking charge. And so, uh, the key here is being able to find a balance and to be able to say no. You know, can you take on one more project? I want to take on one more project, but is it wise? No. You know, and so really that's the key for people that have these contraction furrows. And notice these contraction furrows are going all the way around in the iris. Um, and uh, so here, this inside here, this is all the digestive area here. This is where the stomach and the colon are. And then out here, these are where all the organs and glands are. And notice that all of these contraction furrows are going around where all the organs and glands are. And so based on where these are and where they start and stop and cross over and so on, that can tell us where stress and anxiety could affect that person, could affect their body. So for instance, if they have these rings up here in the brain, reaction field up here, then that could tell us that maybe the person gets migraines when they're stressed or headaches when they're stressed. Uh, if they have these contraction furrows over here uh, in the temporal region, this happens to be the lung and the breast and the bronchial reaction field. So maybe they have trouble breathing or they get a tightness in their chest when they get stressed. You know, uh, maybe if they have them down here in the lower, the lower part of the iris, this happens to be the lower part of the body. So maybe they have, when they get stressed, they get muscle cramps in their legs and so on. So this shows us also sensitivity. All right. And so those of us that have a lot of these contraction furrows, we may be very sensitive, very emotionally sensitive. You may not know it because we may cover it up, but we may be very sensitive. So we can get a lot of things done. We have lots of irons in the fire. We need to learn how to say no. Uh, we, we, we tend to overwork, <laughs> maybe underplay, uh, and, but we can also get a lot done. And uh, so those are called contraction bros. And I wanted to share this picture with you because it's so, it, it's such a great picture in iridology and it's called lipemic diathesis. We also call it a complete corneal arcus or a, cor a cholesterol ring, and a corneal arcus goes around. It's actually on the cornea itself. A lipemic diathesis has to do with the, uh, the hereditary issue of having high fat in the body. And this also includes a diathesis. A diathesis is a predisposition to lipemia. 
uh, and so uh, uh, predisposition to having high cholesterol, high triglycerides, low HDL, high LDL. It, it also can show up if somebody has diabetes, hypoglycemia, blood sugar imbalance. It can also show up if somebody has high blood pressure or low blood pressure. And also it can mean nothing. So it's a predisposition. So being a predisposition means that let's say a person has this marking in their eye and they go have their blood tests and their blood tests come out good. Their, their, their cholesterol is good. Their triglycerides are, are, are in balance. Their HDL and LDL is in balance. Everything is good. They don't have they don't have hypoglycemia, they don't have diabetes, they don't have imbalance of blood sugar, they don't have high, uh, high blood pressure or low blood pressure. So this is just showing us the predisposition to that. In other words, if they, maybe they're eating a really good diet and they're doing their detox and they're doing everything that needs to be done, uh, and therefore they're not having the problem. But if they start going eating fast foods and they start doing all the things that they shouldn't do, then this predisposition can become activated and then they may have problems with that. But this is called a, a, a corneal arcus and uh, we've also known it, like I said, as a cholesterol ring and lipemic diathesis. So I wanted to share that with you. This is called a scurf rim. It's really beautiful. Normally, if you're standing in front of somebody and you look at their eye, it almost looks like they outlined their iris and uh, it's really beautiful. And what it is, is a separation of fibers. And you can see here that the, the fibers here are a little, a little bit separated. So you can see the darkness coming through from underneath. This happens to be the skin and the lymph here. This is the skin reaction field and the lymph. And when there's a separation of fibers here, we're seeing the fibers underneath. And this usually lets us know that maybe the skin may not be breathing as well as it should, may, may not be able to detox as well as it should. We usually uh, see people that have problems with skin elimination. So, and issues with, you know, psoriasis and eczema and uh, pro other problems with the skin, acne and other types of problems with the skin. And so we'll work with people with, and we also know that the skin is the third kidney. So we'll be working with the kidneys and the skin and helping the person do their elimination of the skin. And so that is what that looks like. That's a scurf rim. So at this point, I know Ashley wanted to say something. I just wanted to say thank you. Um, I've been in Brenda's course now for about five, is it five, six months, Brenda? Since August. Since August. And it's been nothing but fun. And she makes it so enjoyable and she's easygoing. But at the same time, she makes you work hard. Yeah. Um, so I think it's a beautiful balance. And if you all are interested in um, iridology, it's a wonderful place to start. Um, I will be taking my IPA exam soon. Um, I'm almost, well, yeah, almost done with level two. Um, I'm excited about that, but definitely reach out to Brenda. She's an amazing teacher. Um, Brenda, would you like to give a little bit more um, contact info or information in general about um these courses or anything else? Sure. So there's my phone number and email there. And I usually teach in February and October. That's usually when I start my classes. Uh, the next class is scheduled for February 13th. And usually it'll run through probably June. I record everything. And uh, that way, you know, if people can't match my schedule, they can always watch the recordings. I also offer iridology analysis. I do live analysis and I do remote analysis. So if this is something that you're interested in, please contact me. I'll go back again to the first page that has all my information. Uh, if, you know, if you're just curious about something, let's say even if you have some marking in your eye and you're kind of curious about what it is, uh, I'm happy to talk to you about it. You can email it to me or you know, send me a text on my cell phone or send me an email and say, hey, I just watched your Discovering Iridology talk and I have this mark in my eye. I'm kind of curious what it is or I'm interested in your class. I'm interested in learning. And we're on Facebook, too. So um, I'm, I'm I am very flexible. 
And yes, we like to have fun in the class because iridology is very scientific. And I always try to make the class fun and it is a lot of work. Ashley, pretty soon, you know, you're gonna be done with level two. You'll get into the mentoring phase with me where it's kind of a one-on-one -on -one phase here and we'll get you ready for the, make sure you're ready for that exam and you take that exam and then you will be a CCI, which is a Certified Comprehensive Iridologist. And that'll be exciting. I'm excited. And even though I'm done with the live classes, I plan on popping in once in a while for the new, uh, you're starting a new uh, semester, right? Yep. February 13th, we're starting a new class. And you're, you're welcome to come in whenever you want to review and to be a part of the Iridology family that we've created. Yep. Well, thank you everyone for watching. Um, it's been a very informative show. And like always, Brenda is a fountain of knowledge. Um, you know, as a person, she has a lot of information, but as an iridologist, she, she just, I mean, like I said, her, her information is worth gold. Um, but I'd like to invite everyone, uh, to get in contact with Brenda, uh, follow us on Facebook, Homeopathy World Community. Dot, um, I was gonna say dot com. Just Homeopathy World Community, or follow my Instagram, Homeopath Ashley. Um, Brenda, you have a uh, group on Facebook, right? You have two groups on Facebook. Can you give the names of that? I can give the name of one, and and that is just Iridology. So if you search on Facebook for Iridology. I think I have like 8,000 people in there. <laughs> it's She's crazy. pretty popular. <laughs> <laughs> and, you know, it's it, they're, they're not all active, thank goodness, because I couldn't keep up. But, uh, <laughs> uh, you know, we in that group, uh, people ask questions and they'll post pictures. You're welcome to come in there, post your pictures and say, hey, what do you see in my eyes? And, and then I will go in and I, I make comments about the eye color and sometimes about the structure or anything that stands out. So you're welcome to come in. It's It doesn't cost anything. It's free if you're curious. Yeah, no, don't be afraid. Don't be shy. Brenda's very down to earth um, and always willing to help out. So, you know, get in touch with her. Um, but thank you so much for coming on our eye opener this month. It's been a pleasure having you here. Thank you for all the information you gave us. And we hope everyone has a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Bye, everyone. Bye. <laughs>